There is just a tremendous efforts that are going on here at University of Delaware related to stroke and rehabilitation. When I met with different researchers and clinicians that work within the college, I was really struck by how engaged and interested in collaboration everyone was. The patient has a, the better chance of a good outcome because everyone within one area can discuss things with each other, meet to discuss someone's care. There's no gaps. We're closing the gaps. You have physical therapy, speech therapy, you have the clinical exercise physiology, psychology that are so important in helping people become whole as, as whole as they can be. Probably one of the biggest areas they participate here in STAR is in our research. So we have um, something that's called the UD Stroke Studies, and this is six principal investigators that work together um, on various research and stroke. Three years ago, I I had a major stroke. I have aphasia. I have trouble communicating. And I'm sad but grateful. My primary interest in aphasia is really looking at what are the impacts of psychosocial factors on the recovery and rehabilitation of aphasia. I teach a course to the doctoral and physical therapy students every fall. This is a, just a great opportunity for the students to get to work directly with patients and also for the patients to come in, interact with the students. Um, they really enjoy it. A lot of them you know, feel like this is really their way of giving back, helping with the education of the DPT students. So we really consider it a win-win situation. The great work that we're doing here, especially within the research department with Darcy Reisman, is it's allowing that opportunity to obtain the information and translate it over to what can be presented in the clinic. In addition to the primary care clinic seeing stroke patients, I also encounter them multiple times per week via research. I am monitoring their stress tests during the GXT study. The GXT is a graded exercise stress test that allows the overall cardiovascular assessment of the stroke patient. The larger group of stroke investigators has sort of pooled our resources together and collectively we recruit and enroll participants into a large protocol that we sort of share responsibility for. So you'll see walking assessments that are standardized in the field. You'll see assessments of strength, flexibility, coordination. We know that after stroke, people's functional level declines and their activity levels uh, as a result go down. And this puts them at risk for another cardiovascular event. So that's where we want to intervene and try to boost people's activity levels because it's a critical time. My balance wasn't quite there. And um, Henry was so awesome. He's the best fit PT I've ever had. Lori has been awesome to work with. You know, she started, I guess, somewhere around 3,000 steps per day when she first came in, and now she's up over five, 6,000 steps uh, per day, so we've seen some great changes. Uh, we know about a third of falls are due to, to trips and slips, and so what this study is looking at is allowing uh, these people to uh, practice the very specific skill of recovering from a trip or a slip in a safe environment. So they're harnessed to an overhead rail, there's no risk of them hurting themselves during this practice. And, and the idea is that if you practice simulated trip and slip recovery, uh, you're going to improve that skill. So that's one thing we're looking at. And then we want to see does this training translate to better mobility and balance overall? Does it increase their balance confidence? And does it enable them to be a little bit more active outside the laboratory in the community? And the training sessions are really focused on the stepping response following a simulated trip or slip. So that initial step you take is very important in preventing you from falling and hitting the ground. So we try to isolate the training where we focus on stepping with the non-affected limb, and more importantly, we're focusing on stepping with the paretic or the affected limb, the limb that has the dysfunction. So we try to target their ability to be able to step with that affected leg. In my experience, I haven't seen anywhere else besides at STAR the ability to recruit the amount of subjects and also get the people involved in their own community um, and hopefully give back by participating in research and the information we gain from that research ultimately goes back to help other individuals that might be not as fortunate as themselves.